Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Um, just wanted to talk to you guys really quickly about how important it is to truly um, be thankful for what God has given you and how important it is to be thankful for the gifts that he's given you as well and how important it is to not compare yourself to anyone else. God you God created us differently. He's given us different gifts. He's given us he's given us different you know, he's given us different strengths, diff, different str uh, weaknesses. He's given us he's blessed us in mighty ways. We've all struggled through something and we've all struggled through different things. But it's so important that we always recognize and understand that because of we're different, we have to embrace that and understand that God has made us fearfully and wonderfully made. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. And it's so important for us to understand that and not try to compare ourselves to other people. There's so many times where and, and uh, social media is really big on that. We see different pictures of on, on social media of a perfect couple, which no one's perfect. Um, they take pictures all the time of one another at, in, on vacation and, and of them and their dog and them or their kids. And maybe they the, the couple maybe just had just had a kid or maybe they just had a new addition to the family. And, they, and then you find yourself comparing yourself, your situation, to their situation. Why am I not married? Why am I not having children? Why is, why is me and my wife not having children? Or ladies, why me and my husband is not having children? The fact of the matter is, is that we have to be thankful for the things that we have and not compare ourselves and complain. We have to stop complaining. God has blessed us with so much. He's blessed us with so much, and there's no reason why we should complain about things that we have. God has blessed us for a reason. Maybe God has gifted you and anointed so maybe has anointed you in a mighty way. And there's people jealous of your anointing because they want to have it. But the fact of the matter is they weren't, they're not able, they don't want to struggle like you struggled. You struggled to get to where you had to be. And so many times we find ourselves wanting what other people have, but we're not willing to struggle and to go through something to get it. We want it all the time. People, the word of God lets us know about that. That people, that we that people are going to want certain things but can't get it. But those who work hard will prosper. The lazy, the lazy people are going to want a lot of things but can't get it but those who work hard will prosper and it's so important for us to constantly work hard and be thankful for the gifts that God has given us prime example of a comparison look at Cain and Abel right Cain and Abel were the sons of Adam and Eve and the fact of the matter is is that Cain just find himself he find himself you know wanting to kill Abel because of the gift Cain gave some of his crops as a gift to God but the thing about it is Abel gave the best of his crops to God so many times we there's so many people out there that gives their tithes and offering and they give more than enough and they recognize and understand that when you're blessed it's better to be a blessing and when you find yourself in a situation where you're being blessed and God is blessing you left and right, He's His favor is all on your life, and and people are and those and people are starting to notice that, but but they begin to get jealous of you because of what God is blessing you with. But all you have to do is give. The Bible lets us know: Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, where men will give unto your bosom fact of the matter is is that once we have to understand how important for us to give we were blessed because we're being a blessing we're being obedient to what god has told us to do but the fact of the matter is those same people are not willing to give 
Those same people are not willing to be obedient and do what God has called them to do. Now, mind you, you may be that person who may be jealous of that person, of your neighbor or of a co-worker of yours. Maybe they're successful in their job and maybe you're not being as successful. Why might that be? You really have to look yourself in the mirror and seek God about it. God, help me to be better than I was before. Seek God first. The Bible lets us know that it's important for us to seek he first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Everywhere your feet treads upon, God will bless it. So he will bless you if you seek him first. Maybe you're not where you need to be and you're not, you don't have what, the, what you have because you may not be seeking God first. And, what I'm, and the reason why I bring this up is because Cain began to be jealous. He, began to, he, he, he was jealous of Abel because he gave his best portion of the firstborn lamb from the flock. He gave his first, he gave his best fruit. He gave his best to God. Cain gave, gave some. And the fact of the matter is, is that we want so much. We're not willing to give. As a result, because of Cain's jealousy, he tricked Abel into going out to the field and he ended up killing him. He ended up killing his own brother because of jealousy. And all he had to do was give his best, give his best fruit. All he had to do, God wants our best. He don't want our leftovers. He wants our best. And once, and if we give him our best, he will give us his best. But the fact of the matter is we find ourselves in a situation being jealous and thinking that's going to help. Jealousy doesn't come from God. That comes from the devil. The Bible lets us know where jealousy and selfish ambition is. There's jealousy of every kind. And the fact of the matter is, is that there's so many times we have selfish ambition, but we're jealous and we have to be better. We can't be jealous of each, each other. Simply just go up to a person, ask them, hey, what do you do? What do you do? What makes you, what is allowing you to be so successful at doing this particular thing? What can I, what kind of, I, I just want to pick your brain. What should I do better? Be happy, celebrate each other's success. Because at the end of the day, our success is not because of us, it's because of God. He's given us the success. Why would Cain want to kill his own brother? Why? It's jealousy. The enemy is a, he allowed the enemy to get to him. The fact of the matter is, is that what, don't we allow the enemy to try to, don't we allow the enemy to get to us? When we try to find ourselves holding a grudge against that person who's doing us wrong, me included. Don't we find ourselves in that situation a lot of times? We find ourselves in a situation where somebody does us wrong. You find yourself jealous of another person because of their success. Why? What is that going to get you? It's not going to get you anywhere. Seek ye first. Seek God first. And he will bless you with more than enough. And don't do it because you'll be blessed. Do it because you love him that much. When you get to a point where you don't love him, that's where you have a problem. Seek ye first. Grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. He will give you favor. Favor isn't fair. And that's legit. Favor is not fair because everybody doesn't have it. I thank God for his favor. Another example. You find yourself, you look at the situation with the prodigal son. When the prodigal son left his father, left his brother, he left. He did his own thing. He took the he took the he took his part of the estate and left. Party did all this foolishness. He didn't have anything left over. He came back. Then the thought when he came back, they began to have a feast. They began to celebrate his son. The father began to celebrate his son's return. But guess what? His other older brother came back. And he saw the festival. He saw everything that was going, the feast that was going on and everybody who was there. And he was wondering, he was wondering why the father did not do the same thing. 
for him. He's been working hard. He's been doing all this. And he has never had that same reaction. Why be jealous of your brother? You should be, instead of him being happy that his brother has returned and God has spared his life, he began to be jealous. There's no need for us to be jealous. Worry about ourselves. We should focus on our own soul salvation and do, and do so with fear and trembling. Focus on that. Focus on our own self. Look at our own self in the mirror. How can we point out the log the speck in someone else's eye, we have a log in our own. We have mistakes. We've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. And we find ourselves looking at someone else. Looking at someone else's mistake. The moment somebody makes a mistake, the per you you find yourself jealous of that person. And the moment that person makes a mistake, you try to tell the you try to tell on that person so they can so they can be disciplined. Because you want it to happen. And we have to find ourselves in situations where we have to stop being jealous of one another. Because at the end of the day, where does that get us? I want to read this verse real quick. Going back to what I was talking about. Um, I want to read. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm going to read 20 through, let's say, 20 through 30. Uh, Luke chapter 15, verses 20 through 30. So he returned home, the prodigal son. Um, and while he was still a, a little long way off, he saw his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. We find ourselves in situations where we have made mistakes. And we find ourselves wanting to, the enemy tries to put guilt inside of us. There's no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. There's no reason for us to live in guilt. Repent of our sins. Give it to God so that we can be forgiven and do our first works over. Let me read that. Let me read the next one. But his father said to his servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have we have been fattening we must celebrate with the feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life he was lost but now he's found so the party began meanwhile the older son saw was in the fields working when he returned he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what was going on? Your brother was back, he was told. And your father has killed the, f the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Let me stop there. If you look at verse 25, Luke chapter 15, verse 25, meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music. Stop there. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field working. Have you ever been in a situation on your job? You work hard. You're a hard worker. You're punctual. And you think and you think that you deserve that promotion. But somebody else gets to promotion that you don't think deserves it. And you begin to feel some type of way. Yeah, I work hard. I do this. I do that. Why are they being celebrated and I work hard? Harder. Look at the brother. He said he was, he said that he, he said that meanwhile the older brother was working in the field. And he began to get angry because he works hard. But they celebrating the guy who left and made the mistake but the fact of the matter is, is that we have to understand that what God has for us is for us. And maybe God didn't give you that promotion for a reason. Maybe he didn't think you were ready for it. Maybe he has something better for you. Maybe he has to work in us to prepare us for what he has for us so that when we do have it, we won't, we won't um, mess that situation up. What God has for us is for us. 
Focus on us and God. Focus on our relationship with God so that we can be the best that we can be and be and be and use the gifts that he's given us for his glory. Every single blessing that we have, we must use it for his glory. Verse 26, and he asked, and he asked one of the servants, what was going on? Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother, older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. Here's the part I was talking about. His father came out, begged him, but he replied, all these years I have slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me one young goat for a feast with my friends. So he began to be jealous of the fact that he didn't get a feast, but his brother did. Yet, when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money, on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. Guys, what God has for you is for you. You don't have to worry about nobody else's blessings. You don't have to worry about nobody else's stuff. Do your best to live for him every single day. Get into the word of God. Get into prayer. Pray. Seek him first. Allow him to work in your life. You cannot live nobody else's life for them. You have to live your life for God. Because at the end of the day, it's not going to be you, that person, and God at the judgment seat. It's going to be you and God. And it's important for us to totally live for him and understand that we can do nothing without him. He's Like I said before, he's given us all gifts. We all have strengths. We all have our weaknesses. Don't be trying, fellas, don't be trying to try to lust over somebody else's wife. God will bless you with your own. Women, don't try to lust over somebody else's husband. Don't try to go after somebody else's husband. Don't try to don't try to go after other people's blessings. If they have a nice car, so be it. Be thankful for them and, and, and believe in God for your own. You have to understand that everybody's at different stages in their life and their walk in Jesus, with Jesus Christ. God works at with everybody at different. He works everybody differently. And it's so important for us as the body of Christ to grow in our relationship with Christ. And as we grow in our relationship with Christ, God will continue to bless us. God will continue to shape us. God will continue to mold us so that we can be more and more like him and give him the glory. At the end of the day, whatever we say, whatever we do, whatever we eat, whatever we drink, we do it to the glory of the Lord. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Don't be jealous of nobody else. Stop complaining. Don't worry about anything that you're dealing with. Don't worry about anything that you're going through. Give it to God in prayer. And when you seek you, when you seek him first, he will bless you. And give. Because when you give, it shall be given unto you. Give and you shall receive. Be blessed.